there are all swords on the table here except for the chariot. So what this is saying to me is somebody has learned a lesson and is moving on. What I feel like is this situation has helped whomever is in the Queen of Swords energy. It's helped them put their own lives into perspective. It has helped, it has helped them see some sort of stronger priority, better priority. It's helped you prioritize your life <laughs> probably in like a real back ass backwards type of way, but still it doesn't matter. You got there. Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, but also this is a bit of, this is a timeless reading. Yeah. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, also remember it's a general reading. Yeah. Um, but so hi guys. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm diving right into it, but like, I have so much that I want to, want to say, I want to talk about. So um, first of all, yesterday we did have that full moon in Scorpio in terms of sidereal astrology. Yes. Uh, oh, that's right. It wouldn't be in Libra. If it, if it was, if you're looking at it from a tropical point of view, it would have been Sagittarius. Uh, but in sidereal uh, astrology, which is what I practice, it was in Scorpio. Um, and if you did not get a chance to watch Happy Hour from last night, uh, titled Happy Hour slash Full Moon Eclipse in Scorpio for May 26th, 2021. Please go ahead and check that out. Um, it's a really great session. It's two hours long. I did one personal reading. I have another one. Um, but mostly those two hours were uh, wrapped up in uh, collective readings, collective energies. I did talk about um, my interpretation of the full moon and the energies of the full moon and what's going on for us right now astrolog astrologically. Um, that was like the first hour. And then the, the second hour was just a bunch of random collected messages, including divine feminine and divine masculine twin flame messages. Yes. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and check that out. Um, I will post it here in the, uh, in the little bar there. And then also, um, I'll try and feature it on my page so that it's easier for you guys to find it. Excellent session. Excellent reading. Um, I definitely recommend that you check that out. But now keeping um, following suit, uh, for, for those of you guys that remember from yesterday, I did mention that I was I finally purchased the astrology software that I've been wanting to purchase, the Prometheus software in which I can study and look at the planets and the placements and what's going on from a sidereal point of view. And I do have every intention of incorporating more of that into my readings. So with that said, um, for the morning coffee daily readings, I am going to talk a little bit I am planning on talking a little bit about the daily astrology if there's anything major happening. So that kind of takes some of the timelessness out of the reading. Uh, but in terms of when we get to the tarot messages and whatnot, even if we're even when we're talking about planetary transits or anything, everything is energy, and there is no there are no like hard lines between energetic resonances, right? It's all a spectrum. So even though I may be talking about some transit or something that's happening for a specific day, that doesn't mean that it absolutely has to happen for you on that day. It's all still a spectrum. It's all just still going to take time to flow through, right? So with that said, what I do want to mention about today is, um, you know, this full moon in Scorpio has been a pretty strong doozy for us. And it's so funny because the last full moon we had was in Scorpio, wasn't it? And that was a, what was, that one was a pretty doozy, a pretty big doozy also. But what I do want to say is, uh, the moon as of this morning, as of early this morning, the moon did transit from Scorpio into Ophiuchus. And for me, for at least from what I'm getting from it, my interpretation is that this is actually a really awesome chance for you to heal from whatever was stirred up from the moon, the full moon being in Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio is the eighth house. Scorpio is all about um, illusion, um, uh, secrets, the depths, your, your shadow side, the deepest parts of yourself. It's also all about revealing those things. And now that the sun, I'm sorry, now that the moon has transited into Ophiuchus, 
Ophiuchus is the sign of the healer, okay? So there is a whole lot of potential healing that can happen and processing also that can happen as the moon is moving through Ophiuchus and then entering into Sagittarius late tonight. So you go from it being in Scorpio, where a lot of illusions are broken, a lot of things are revealed to you, or at least what is most important for you to see, feel, hear, or understand is uh, is illuminated for you, dependent on, depending on your path and how it is you're moving through your path, where you are on your path right now, and where it is you're going in your path. From there, when the moon moves into Ophiuchus, which is where it is for a majority of the day today, you can start to process and gain some sort of healing clarity from whatever was revealed to you, whatever has been revealed to you, or whatever it is you're going through right now. And then, late tonight, I think it's like around, I want to say 6 or 7 p.m. Eastern time, of course, tonight is when the moon will be trans transiting into Sagittarius. So from the illumination or the revealing from of Scorpio, then to the healing in Ophiuchus, then to the philosophy of Sagittarius, as these energies flow through, you may find yourself able to put some sort of theory or some sort of philosophy or some sort of deeper spiritual understanding into, uh, uh, into whatever it is is being revealed to you or whatever it is you're healing through right now. I'm also feeling like as the moon moves into Sagittarius, you'll be able to really implement some sort of actual practicality that is influenced by the sun being in Taurus right now. So th this might be a really challenging time for you. Yes, it's a challenging time for all of us, okay? But the planets are in our position where it's actually really helping us face these things and heal from these circumstances or situations in a very loving and nurturing and healing way. Yes, it may be a pretty extreme situation that you're going through, but that it, but but the the planetary aspects and where they are placed, I feel are energetically amicable to you being loving and nurturing and understanding of yourself right now. Why? Because you have the sun in Taurus, you have the moon I'm sorry, you have the Sun in Taurus, you have Venus in Taurus. Venus is at home in Taurus. You also have Mercury in Taurus. And with Venus being in its home, and it's one of its home signs of Taurus, right? Venus rules Taurus and Libra. There is a level of compassion, understanding, and nurturance that's coming through for this. I, I don't want to get into too much detail because I did explain all of this yesterday. So if you're really wanting to understand more of where I'm coming from and my philosophy here, definitely check out Happy Hour from last night. Now also we do have Mars still in Gemini. So this is all about, in my opinion, this is all about um, choosing a new direction to move in. And that's why we have an opportunity to really dig down to the deepest depths and try and find some sort of understanding so that we can move forward in our path in a new and better way. Yes? All right, kids. That's a nice little check out there. Yeah. I'm really excited to incorporate more astrology into my readings and into my work here. So that's what I'm going to be working on moving forward. Yeah? All righty, y'all. So let's get into today's reading. Um, going with the vice versa deck plus also the Los Carabeo deck for clarity and then we'll be crossing the Oracle Bridge when we get there. Yeah, let's do it. See what we've got for today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All righty. Five shuffles here. 
One. Oop, try that again. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty. So, what's going on today? What do we want to talk about for the moment? What messages do you have for us, please, Spirit? I love that. I fucking love it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, we have the Seven of Swords and the Five of Swords as our overall energies right now. Yikes. Okay. Now, in this situation, we could be talking about counterparts. All right, so we, this could be twin flames. This could be marriage as, as in husband and wife status, husband and husband, wife, wife, like what the fuck ever. Um, but I definitely feel like we're talking about... We're talking about two different people, okay? We're talking about you, all right? But then we're also talking about someone else. And actually, this other p person, it may, it's possible that this may be um, a collective of people, okay? So this could be you against the other people or you and you at odds with someone else or whatnot, whatever. However, what I do want to say here is that I don't feel like you or one side of this situation, I don't feel like you're trying to fight any longer. Okay, the first two cards that came out, we have the Chariot, notice the back is turned. We also have the Queen of Swords, notice the back is turned, okay? On the other side of the equation, we have the King of Swords in reverse, and we have the Nine of Swords in reverse, all right? I do feel very strongly that this is a husband and wife situation. I am feeling that. Uh, this is, and an, uh, please excuse me, I do feel very strongly that this is a marriage situation, regardless of gender, okay? Um, one side of the equation as is done 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 had just about enough, has turned their back on the situation, and is focused intently on moving forward. And what I'm getting very specifically with this Queen of Swords energy is, don't fuck with me. Don't come up in here trying to change my mind. Don't come up in here trying to argue with me. I'm done. I've had enough. I'm moving forward, period. Okay, and the other person or the other side of the equation is all stuck in their head. King of Swords in reverse, Nine of Swords in reverse. And it feels very specifically that their fears are what is challenging them the most right now. Their fears are what's driving them to be in the situation or to be taking up the stance that they have been taking up. And I feel like if divorce is happening here for you guys, it's because one person can't get the fuck out of their own head, can't get out of their own way, and the other person has had enough, okay? We could be talking about a relationship. We could be talking about a romantic relationship, a creative relationship, a business relationship, what the fuck ever. But what I do feel specifically for someone out there, this has to do with marriage. The overall energy is the seven of swords with the five of swords. okay? So this has become nothing but a destructive situation. There are all swords on the table here except for the chariot so what this is saying to me is somebody has learned a lesson and is moving on what i feel like is this situation has helped whomever is in the queen of swords energy it's helped them put their own lives into perspective it has helped it has helped them um see some sort of uh stronger priority, better priority. It's helped you prioritize your life <laughs> probably in like a real back ass backwards type of way, but still it doesn't matter you got there. That's all that matters. And it feels like you're moving forward very, very strongly, okay? I'm gonna get one more pull from this deck and then we'll clarify. So uh, what's the continuing of this story here, Spirit, that you wanna talk to us about? Now, to be quite honest with you, this doesn't have to be 
two different people. This could be two versions of you, okay? We have the Page of Swords now at the bottom uh, as overall energy. We still have the Five of Swords, all right? But the sun is setting on this side of the Five of Swords, okay? And look, we have a back turn again with the Page of Swords. So um, the Page of Swords is the seeker, is the sentry. I feel like the Page of Swords here is representing you looking forward, you moving forward, not trying to not trying to look back on the past. Um, and and now, in terms of what's going on astrologically right now, uh, again, definitely go check out yesterday's happy hour because it, I go into detail about how, I'm, how, I, how I am interpreting these energies right now. But one of the things, one of the major aspects that I, I noticed or I paid attention to was the fact that Mars is in Gemini right now. Again, this is from sidereal astrology point of view. Uh, or true sidereal astrology, but with Mars being in Gemini, I picked up that there is a strong and sincere uh, uh, energy of you being at a crossroads, okay? Uh, trying to figure out which, which direction you want to move in at this point, and especially with that full moon in Scorpio and all kinds of things being revealed to us right now, all kinds of wake-up calls happening right now, it's like you have the opportunity to either continue in the path that you've been in, that you've been on, or i.e. the old self, or you could take this new path that you're now, that is now opening up to you as you're going through this healing process of figuring things out, uncovering things, and working with that, and, and thus going down the path of what would be considered the new you. What we have here is the Two of Wands. There you go. There's that crossroads. The Two of Wands, the Ten of Swords, and the Four of Cups. So what I feel like here is, even if there is some sort of energy of you being, you kind of wanting to stay in the past energy, all right? This could be the, the representation of the past you with the King of Swords in reverse and the Nine of Swords in reverse. Even if there was some sort of pull, some sort of drive that might influence you to stay, I don't feel like you're staying on that path any longer. I feel like you're definitely moving forward, all right? So this is where we get into the potentiality of this just being representative of two sides or two versions of you, i.e. your old self versus the new self in terms of the direction that you're moving in now. And I don't feel like you're gonna be sticking with the old path any longer. Sure, Ten of Swords, but also Four of Cups, okay? And it's this side of the Four of Cups where we see the ship has sailed. And what this feels like for me is your the ship of yourself has sailed. So even if there's any sort of sentimentality or some sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Six of Cups energy. Uh, shit, it starts with an R. Hold on. No, not an R. Nostalgia. If there's any sense of nostalgia involved with the past or the old self or the old version or whatever it is you're coming from, that could technically or normally that might be an influencer to keep you there or to keep you on in that version of yourself. And that may have been um, an, uh, like a, your kryptonite or like your Achilles heel in the past. But at this point, your soul has moved on. That ship has sailed. The, the ship of yourself, the ship of your soul has moved on. There's no value there any longer. You're bored with that any lo now. You, it, I mean, like, even, even if there was something that could hold on to you, you're still just kind of like, oh, no. Just, no, I'm done with that. I've had enough, all right? You're moving forward. The only major arcana that we have here is the chariot, and that is so pivotal, you guys, okay? Because this, to me, is saying that with the chariot, you've come into a greater alignment with yourself. You actually, you've come to a greater sense of emotional awareness. Perfect. That's what, Scor that's what the full moon in Scorpio was helping you to do, right? Scorpio is a water sign, and this happened in the fifth house, and the fifth house is all about self-expression right? Greater authenticity. There is an opportunity to, to cultivate a greater sense of authenticity here, a greater sense of internal balance, which is helping you move forward in a very different way, okay? 
So even if there was any sort of inclination or some sort of try or, or some sort of effort to like pull on your heartstrings to keep you in this old situation, nope. I've had enough of that. Four of Cups. Yes. Okay. So let's get some clarity here. All right, five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. There is definitely a lack mentality that is associated with this King of Swords in Reverse and the Nine of Swords in Reverse. Now, if we are talking about you, just you, we're not talking about another person, um, even, well, actually, it really doesn't matter, regardless of what we're talking about here. The King of Swords in Reverse and the Nine of Swords in Reverse represents somebody that is stuck in their mind and can't get themselves out of it and can't see clearly, okay, if we're talking about someone external to you or another person. Also, the King of Swords in Reverse and the Nine of Swords in Reverse represents a time period in which, in your life, where you were trying to focus on figuring something out, trying something, continuing to work on something, continuing to try and see a point of view or see all sides or aspects of the situation. But now with it being in reverse, you're done looking at that. You're done stressing yourself out about it. You're done worrying about it. It's like, instead of focus on it, focusing on it so much and it creating so much stress for you, you're deciding to just release it and let it go. Okay. Let's look a little bit deeper. King of Swords and Nine of Swords, both in reverse. What clarity do you have for us, please, Spirit, in terms of this? And what you got to be fucking kidding me. The Queen of Swords. I told you. Anything else? We'll leave it right there. Okay, so this is definitely a representation of you coming to terms with something internally. King of Swords in reverse, Nine of Swords in reverse. First of all, as you saw, the first card out was the Queen of Swords, all right? Dunny, done, done. That's it. It's over. We're done here. But the reason why that's happened is because you have come to a greater sense of understanding internally. The Hermit to the Ace of Swords to, to Temperance to the Six of Wands to the fucking Four of Cups again, okay? This was all at the bottom of the deck. But what's also come out here in conjunction with the Queen of Swords is the Ace of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and the Nine of Swords again, okay? So what this means to me, or what this is saying to me here is I just heard uh, working through your fears. I feel like you've gotten to the point where you were tired of being afraid of moving forward. You were tired of being wrapped up in this what if energy, this doomsday energy, the sky is falling, everything's going to fail. You're tired of that. You're cutting that out. And the reason why you could be cutting that out, well, no, the reason why you are cutting that out is because you found a sense of unconditional love, or at least you found some sort of reservoir or wellspring of love within yourself to help facilitate you working through these aspects, three of pentacles, self-mastery, and cutting it out, okay? Shit, you guys. All right, so then with that said, let's go to this side of the equation, queen of swords, with the chariot. What can you tell us about that, please, spirit? Queen of Swords and the Chariot here. Okay, this has definitely come from a sense of activation. There you go. There you go. Three of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. Okay. But what this is saying to me here is this moving forward in this way is fueled by some sort of heartbreak that you've experienced up until this point, whether that be for an extended amount of time or whether this be a new sense of heartbreak. This is what is fueling you. Three of swords, but not just the three of swords, not just the heartbreak, the justice that you would like to see 
in terms of whatever heartbreak this is. And I def and, and then underneath justice is the king of wands to the knight of cups. There is definitely an energy of feeling extremely confident in yourself, not allowing yourself to be held back any longer, not, any, not allowing anyone to tell you that you can or cannot do something, especially if you're dealing with a marriage, okay? And moving forward confidently with it, moving forward towards justice for yourself. Okay, now what else has come out in conjunction to with uh, the Queen of Swords and the Chariot in, in, in clarification? First card out was the Knight of Swords, followed by the Knight of Wands, followed by the Empress. Okay, so Knight of Swords came out first, and this to me said that you are fighting your way forward. And you're fighting your way forward because you have reached a sense of activation, the Knight of Wands. To me, the Knight of Wands is like when he's not representing a fuck boy or a fuck girl, he is the activated side. He is the illuminated side. He is the spiritual warrior. He is, he is the, the, the free spirit. And the Knight of Wands is fire. The Knight of Swords is air. These two fuel each other, okay? Oxygen fuels fire. So however it is you are moving forward here, you're really fighting for it. And that is providing more fuel to the fire within you that has been activated recently. And this is all supported by the love, the care, the support of the Empress, all right? So what I was saying about uh, it astrologically right now or for this time period, or really, quite frankly, this is a timeless reading, so whenever this feels right for you, okay. But, um, if we're looking at it from the astrological point of view of the moment, and today is the 27th of May, I believe, right? Yes, because yesterday was the 26th. Okay. Um, we have the sun in Taurus. We have Mercury in Taurus, but we also have Venus in Taurus. And I mean... Taurus is a very loving, very nurturing, very caregiving type energy. Taurus is where you come from. You come out of Aries where all kinds of ideas and, and inspiration has been generated. You have all these seeds of things that you want to do. Now you move into Taurus and now you give those seeds a practical way of growing. So you plant them in the ground. You nurture them. You love them. You care for them. You give them the water, the nurturance, the love that they need so that they can grow in a practical way. Okay, so that right there alone, just in Taurus alone, there's a shit ton of nurturing energy. But with Venus being in Taurus as well, that adds extra compassion, extra unconditional love, extra care, extra nurturance. And the Empress represents Venusian energy. Okay, so... Allow your fire to be fueled. I mean, don't go chopping heads off unnecessarily, but you know what? Love yourself enough to keep driving forward. Nurture yourself enough to allow your fire to be fueled so you can continue in this new direction. Okay? Beautiful. Last thing I want to clarify here is the Two of Wands, the Ten of Swords, and the Four of Cups. All right. So you are you either are at a crossroads or you were at a crossroads. Either way, I feel like just like I said, just like I said in yesterday's full moon reading, please, you guys, if you haven't checked it out, please go check it out, because this reading is obviously an extension of that. Right. But what I said in that reading was I'm not sure if, you know, you know what the answer is yet which direction that you're wanting to go in yet, but I do feel very strongly you're going to figure it out, okay? You're not going to be in the dark about that for long. And the main reason that I'm seeing now why you're going to be moving in a new direction is because of the boredom associated with the old situation with what needs to be coming to an end. You finally recognize the value in letting that go because this no longer serves you. Again, even if there are some nostalgic aspects to it, eh, not going to work. Yeah. Let's get a little bit of clarity here. Two of wands, ten of swords, four of cups, please. Spirit, what else can you say to us about that? What else do you want to say to us about that? Fucking A. Not doing it. First card out was the King of Swords. Overall energy is the Ace of Swords. 
all right? So we have the King and the Queen of Swords coming out here in both situations. And now I'm really feeling, oh, I'm sorry, in the, both the beginning and the end of the reading. And now I'm definitely feeling like the King of Swords with the Nine of Swords in re reverse that came out the first time, that is the path, that is the old you, that is the old path that you were trying to figure out. Ringing. You were trying to figure things out. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm talking in the, it's getting more intense. You were trying to figure that side out, but there's nothing else to figure out any longer. The King of Swords was in reverse in that aspect. For the most part, again, there, there could be some situations in which this was talking about another person, but I also feel like this is talking about the old you. There's nothing to see here any longer. King of Swords. King of Swords, you see very clearly the burdens that were associated with that old aspect. King of Swords, Ten of Wands. It's done. You see it clearly at this point. And that's what's facilitating the feelings of this boredom type energy or just the energies of the ship has sailed. Even if you still find yourself physically in that place on an energetic level, on a spiritual level, on a soul level, that ship has sailed. And you see very clearly now why, okay, again, even if there's some sort of nostalgic bullshit that is t pulling or at least trying to pull on your heartstrings, it ain't going to work. So the message here now to the nine of wands, to the knight of pentacles, keep moving forward. Okay, don't give up. Don't go back. The knight of wands, I'm sorry, the knight of pentacles does not backtrack. He just keeps moving forward. Okay. Ace of Swords to the Hermit at the bottom of the deck, back to the Six of Wands, <laughs> Temperance, and the Eight of Cups. Okay. Beautiful, you guys. I'm actually wanting to get some closing oracle guidance from the one deck that loves to just throw my allergies into a frenzy because it's all like mildewy from when I moved here, but it's the Moonology deck. I might want to replace this deck at some point. Anyway, so when I moved here to Puerto Rico, I had a bunch of my stuff shipped by a moving company, and, but because of that, it, it was on a barge in a, um, a container for like two months. So there's that. All right, anyway, uh, closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. Five shuffles, four, four, one. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy, you guys, this is intense. It's not loud. It's a fairly low tone but like my ear feels, feels clogged. It's ringing right now, it's been ringing. Massive downloads are coming through. And actually I feel like transmissions are happening as I'm speaking through this, so that's why I'm getting this ringing. Because I'm paying attention to the ringing and nothing extra is coming through. No extra like, audio, uh, like words or messages, but I feel a transmission is happening. Get in on it. All right, this is two. Three. Oops, try again. Three. And four. The left side is the feminine side. So I feel like if this is a transmission, if you're receiving a transmission through this reading right now, it's a transmission from the Empress, from the, from the Divine Mother. It's a, tr it's a transmission of unconditional love allowing you to set yourself free. Allowing you to nurture yourself and love yourself enough to know when it's time to allow yourself to be set free. Closing oracle message, please, Spirit. Okay. 
At the bottom of the deck, you do have the south node. Do not let your past hold you back. But then the message that's come out here is new moon in Gemini. Communication is key. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to communicate with other, like the other people that are involved in this situation or whomever it is or whatever it is you're moving away from. This is about communicating with the self. And you really do have a very strong or even I want to say perfect opportunity to really get some loving and nurturing communication going on with yourself right now because we do have Mercury in Taurus within all of that nurturing and loving and caregiving energy, coupled with the Empress or Venus that's also in Taurus. Okay, let's read through this. And then I do think we wanna close with the Crystal Mandala as well. Okay, so in terms of a new moon in Gemini, I'm going to read this to you guys. A successful relationship usually comes down to one thing, communication. And the new moon in Gemini card is all about the start of a new cycle for communicating with the person at the center of your question. But in this situation, you guys, the person at the center of the question is you, okay? Talking things through is the answer to whatever it is you're asking about. If you can't talk to that person, you can journal about it to yourself. Emails, text messages, and all other forms of communication will also help you now. If the issue you are asking about concerns a sibling or neighbor, there's a new start coming, a time to wipe the slate clean and start over. This card could also suggest you've been too frivolous lately and need to get grounded again. But most importantly, drawing this card emphasizes the need to communicate. Excellent. Uh, last one. Crystal Mandala. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. Two. I am just going to take that one. <laughs> just gonna take it. It's card number one, Archangel Metatron and Clear Quartz, power. The way that flipped out of the deck while I was shuffling was quite unique. So I was just like, you know what? Let's just take it, okay. Here we go. Together, we bring you the gift of power. Spiritual power enables you to trust in your higher guidance, no matter what appears to be happening in your life. Psychological and emotional power enables you to transform through evolving your belief systems and processing your emotions through which you gain wisdom. Physical power gives you the strength to take action on the matters that serve your life path. This gift of power is safe for you to receive because you will use it to fulfill your divine destiny, which in turn supports all beings. This oracle brings you guidance about the nature of power within you. As part of your spiritual journey at this time, you are being given the opportunity to change your relationship to power. This may mean letting go of fear of being powerful. It might seem strange to hold such a fear, yet if we look around the world today, there are many examples of those in powerful positions being exploitive and abusive rather than protective and empowering of those that may be impacted by their expression of power. As you continue to become comfortable with owning your power, you will learn how to handle yourself in a way that is lovingly disciplined and strong. You shall become even more willing to admit to aspects of your character not constructive or helpful without judging yourself, 
but whilst also acknowledging you are powerful enough to do something to heal an attitude or change a behavior that isn't supporting your soul. You will then increase your power even more because you'll increase, increase your ability to overcome the behaviors that would once have held you back. Mic drop. <laughs> there you have it, guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>